I'm going to cover plagiarism today. I'm on page 108 in your textbook. Uh, the first part talks about the two kinds of plagiarism. The one kind, which I don't think anybody in, that I've run into in college has done this, but what they do is they take information from another source, give no credit at all, put it in their paper and turn it in and hope the teacher thinks that that was just a nice piece of writing by the student. I don't see that. What I see is a second, because that's more like junior high, maybe high school. What I see, which I think is kind of an inadvertent, just uh, a mistake that people are not aware of, they will take another source and they won't quote it. If they quote it and give credit, then obviously people know it came from another source, but they will use information from another source they will give credit through those parenthetical references that we talked about. They'll give credit, but there are no quotation marks there. Now, in the minute you don't have quotation marks, but you took something from another source, this is what you have to do. You have to read the source material. <clears throat> you have to interpret it your own way. Think about how you would say it, and then put it down on your piece of paper with your style, your sentence structure, your own language skills. Okay, so does that make sense? You can't use the structure of the original. You can't use the same sentence styling, the same way of putting sentences together. You have to be able to say it in your own words. So let me show you some examples. It's just easier if I show you some examples. So uh, if you look at the bottom of page 108, there's a famous American, and I'll tell you who it is in just a minute. If you look at A1, this is the original source. So the, this famous American is reading this material, and here's what it said. Tillich distinguishes between a sign and a symbol. A characteristic of the symbol is its innate power. The symbol possesses a necessary character. It cannot be exchanged. On the other hand, a sign is impotent in itself and can be exchanged at will. Now, at this point, don't worry about what all that means. We're not sitting here trying to figure out the meaning. I just want to show you what happened when this uh, American took this information. So look at number two, right at the very bottom of the page. I said, in the American's research paper, he did give credit, right? It was given credit. Here's what it looks like, top of 109. Tillich insists that a symbol is more than a merely technical sign. The basic characteristic of the symbol is its innate power. A symbol possesses a necessary characteristic. It can't be exchanged. A sign, on the contrary, is impotent and can be exchanged at will. There we go, Tillich in parentheses, do you see that? 412. In other words, this, this author, this American writer says, I use Tillich, you can go to page 412 and, and see. Well, here's the problem. Let's go back and, and take a look at the original. Here's the first sentence. Tillich distinguishes between a sign and a symbol. How was the American's translation of that? Tillich insists a symbol is more than a merely technical sign. I think that's different enough. This person took the original, and changed it quite a bit. So I'm okay with that. I don't think that's plagiarism, but watch how bad it goes for this person as they continue. Look at number two, the second sentence. The original said a characteristic of the symbol is its innate power. The basic characteristic of the symbol is its innate power. That's the Americans using that. Do you see it's almost word by word exactly the same, but it's not in quotation marks. So this is trouble. This really is plagiarism. Let's look at the third sentence. It cannot be exchanged. I'm sorry, the second one is, the symbol possesses a necessary character. A symbol possesses a necessary characteristic. That's the only thing they change. They turn character into characteristic. Well, is that enough to avoid plagiarism? No, this is way too close. Let's go to the next sentence. It cannot be exchanged. What did the American say who wrote this? It cannot be exchanged, word for word. Okay, this is definitely plagiarism. <clears throat> Look at the last sentence there. On the other hand, a sign is impotent in itself and can be exchanged at will. What did the American say? A sign on the contrary is impotent and can be exchanged at will. The only thing that got changed there was on the other hand and on the contrary. Is that enough to avoid plagiarism? No, no, not at all. So the first sentence was fine and then the American began just using Tillich. Well, if he's that close to what the original author was saying, he needs to put it in quotation marks and just say, I can't figure out how to say this in my own words. I'll just put Tillich's information with quotation marks in my paper. Now, you may say, well, okay, well, then that's the solution. Every time I come across a piece of information, if I'm a little stuck with it, I'll just quote it and put it in my paper. Do you see a problem with that? I hope you do. If your paper is just full of quote after quote after quote after quote, 
What does that start looking like? It's the other person's paper. You're not even in it. You're just cutting and pasting in a sense. You're just taking pieces from another source and putting it in your paper. It doesn't look like you're using creative and careful thinking. You're not using critical thinking skills. You're not interpreting what an author said to go, huh, how do I say that in my words and in my style to get the same idea across? Okay, so that's the danger. So what I'm going to ask you to be doing is take a look at, uh, here's Stephen Ambrose under letter B on page 109. He's a very well-known American writer, very well-known historian. Look what he's done. And I won't take the time. This is going to be your assignment. But take a look what Stephen Ambrose did here. Look at his original, then look at his use of that material. Letter C, halfway down the page, 109. A governor of California. Obviously, he didn't write. I'm sure he had a speechwriter. But his speechwriter decided he would use for his inspiration a speech by President Bill Clinton back in 1993. Look how close it is. Okay, and then I'm asking you to be the judge. Do you see down there, bottom of 109 and 110? There's the original, the very bottom of 109, and it goes over to 110, and then I have a number one and a number two on page 110. Read those two and keep going back to the original and see what do you think. Which one of these has been kind of lazy and is just kind of incorporating a lot of the original, and which one has actually reinterpreted it and thought about it and put it down in his or her own style? So, how do you avoid plagiarism? I'm, I'm on page 110. Number one, you've got to give credit for anything that's not common knowledge. We talked about that before. Number two, you have to, when you're doing a summary or a paraphrase, it's got to be, like, put it in bold here because it's so important. It has to be your own words and your own style of writing. Okay, so you've got to change things. Now, sometimes you can't change a particular word, like you come across the word quantum mechanics. I'm not asking you to come up with another word for quantum mechanics. I'm just saying you need whatever your sentence is that contains quantum mechanics. Make sure it's your style of writing as you're putting that sentence together. Uh, number three, don't copy text material from the internet and paste in your paper without some kind of notation. You've got to put those quotation marks in there um, if it's something you're taking word for word. Uh, number four, this is huge. This is what we're talking about here. Keep in mind that plagiarism can involve stealing, not the exact wording, but ste stealing the style, for instance, and the phrasing of the original source. That's a real danger when you're writing your research paper. Remember, you're taking 10 sources and putting that into your paper. That means 10 times you've got to be very careful that you're translating what that person is saying into your own style. Uh, number five, if you're in doubt, you've got to give credit. And then there are a bunch of tips and places that you can go to. So I will leave it at that. It's not going to be a long video, but it's really important. When you, you've got to do one of two things when you're using a source. You're either going to quote it or you're going to interpret it and put it in your style and your, your way of writing. If you quote it, don't have a lot of quotes. I do want to see some quotations, but don't fill your paper with it. Then it's not your paper. So most of the time, you're going to be translating into your way of talking. So that's a danger. You can get yourself into plagiarism. But just be careful about that. If you have any doubts or any questions, you can always send me a chunk of information with the original and say, how am I doing? Am I staying away from plagiarism? Okay, well, I wish you well.